So now we're going to talk about the concept of images here, right? They're basically recipes that build your system images. Now they may include re they may include things like your bootloader, and they may include things like your they may include things like your uh, kernel as well, DTS files, your DTB files, if you will. Don't have to, but they can, and often they do as far as that goes. All right, so basically building an image creates an entire Linux distribution from source. Now remember that we're building from source and because of that, it's gonna take some time. Your distribution, depending upon what your builder looks like, how fast your disks are, how much space you have, and all of that may take a considerable amount of time. When I'm doing the um, when I'm doing the reference builds for Meta OE for my architecture, it may take six or seven hours to basically um, test them against a new version of of, uh, of uh, master, typically of Meta OE and and uh, what when uh, they're doing development as far as that goes. So in that case, it's only one layer, which is Meta OE, which is about 24, 2,500 packages uh, we're going to be building. And we do it against different architectures to verify that there's the patches are correct for them, and that they all those things work as far as that goes. So it takes a considerable amount of time, like doing a world build, if you will, in, in uh, and indeed, that's what we're calling is a world build uh, to, to test that out. So when we build an entire image here, we're going to build the compiler the tool chain and the libraries that are necessary for the base libraries, if you will, that are basically for that architecture, whatever that happens to be. We're also going to build additionally some native tools that we may need in order to be able to perform our functions. So for example, we're going to build PSEUDO for sudo so that we can correctly install things in our sysroots um, and not in the sysroots that are related to the, the base system itself. We're going to also build the BSP, that is the bootloader and the kernel as well. Now, that may have already been built if it's a QEMU image. It gets built one time, and then you never have to do it again. You're going to also build the root file system for this, the base OS, whatever that happens to be, to contain. Maybe you're building UC libc. Maybe you're using muscle. Maybe you're using glibc. All of those base OS things are going to be built ahead of time. You're going to then go ahead and build the services. What things do I have to have? Do I have to have a web server? Do I have to have, um, for example, uh, SSH? Because that's important to me. Do I use curl? Well, all those things that you need to use. And then on top of that, any applications that you need as well. So you maybe have to also build Qt, for example, as part of those services or those libraries that are necessary for your application to work. All of those things take time. I, I was building for something called um, WebOS. And we have something that we've called Loon OS as a result of that. And it uses Qt Web Engine. Qt Web Engine, just to do the link, takes around five and a half gigabytes of of um, of space just to do that. I'm talking about RAM now, just five and a half gigabytes just for that particular link, even with gold. And so it's it takes a considerable amount of time to build things like this. So you're going to go ahead and have to build all of those things depending upon what you need. And it can take a lot of time depending on what you have. If you have a laptop that you're building from or you're building from a VM, yeah, it might take a while as far as that goes here. Often you will want to create your own image recipe in order to add whatever new packages of functionality that you have. There's a couple of different ways in which you can do this, right? And what we do is we prefer to extend an existing recipe or inherit a class in order to be able to do that. Now, there's a couple different ways we'll see that. So we can start with a base image, like we can start with core image minimal, and we can inherit that, if you will, or we can go ahead and, and um, for extending a different recipe, or you can inherit the class and build the package groups that create that particular image. Now, if you're familiar with, um, if you're familiar with meta packages, that you will that you find in 
things like Ubuntu, for example, they're build package groups. They build groups of other packages. So the images that you have are not just one thing that they're building, but they might be building 5, 10, 15, 20 things, the libraries that are necessary for any additional utilities, and then the main application itself, for example. So we're going to talk about that and how we do that same thing for building images. So you can add packages already, right? You can, the simplest way we say is to inherit the core image BB class and define what packages groups you're going to build and what additional packages that you want for your image. For example, that's a, that's a typical way you would want to do that. If you want to add packages to the image, you can add them by using the image install variable in order to be able to add them. Now you'll start to see that in this point here that we have things like extra image install and core image install and things like that. And the, the variable names all end up doing the same thing in the end, which is to add packages, but how they're used and where they're used does matter. It changes quite a bit as to how they're used. Some things will go in, for example, in your local.com for when you're doing initial things. Right. For additional testing, I want to add additional things to your package, to your image. You can do that. On the other hand, eventually what you're going to do is you're going to create your own recipe that's probably going to inherit some other image or some other package groups that are inside of those images to create your final image of whatever you're going to use. So be aware of that. So we're going to be seeing, you might see four or five, you might see feature, the word feature. You might see image install or feature install. Well, the question of which what's a feature and what isn't is is debatable, but the reality is is that it all does the same thing, which is to add packages or package groups to your image so that you can create a custom image for yourself. Okay, are there any questions on that before I move on? All right. So here's our here we're going to create an images directory here, right? So you'll notice that we're going to create a build. You don't really have to create this. It's going to create it for you. Okay. It's going to, you're going to create the image recipe itself here. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. No, that's right. You are building it. It's in the right spot. I was thinking it was under temp. It's not. Okay. So you're going to build an images directory in your recipes core. You're going to create an image um, BB file. You're going to go ahead and give it some descriptive metadata here. It's just a core image. It's MIT. And our image install, right? Here's our image install uh, initial one is we're going to we're going to use package group core boot. That is essentially what is in core image minimal, right? That is. So if you really want to find out how you create a very custom image yourself, go look at what's in the recipes that are in the core image. Hey, everything I want to I want for this res, this this thing is in core image. Um, is in core image minimal. Well, you go look at that and it says, well, that means that you're going to build package group core boot. Okay, fine. Additionally, I want to go ahead and build drop bear and I want to build P splash for some reason. I want to have a nice little splash screen come up when it's booting, right? Okay, easy to do here. You just add this. You'll notice it's a plus equal here. The image install, the initial one is just the package group that you want to build. Plus these additional features, right? These are our desired packages, if you will. We go ahead and inherit core image. That's a BB class, right? That core image BB class will then go ahead and, and create that image for you that includes all those packages that are in core package group core boot, in addition to P splash and drop bear. We also want to go ahead and make sure that our root file system size is default set at 8192, and that's in megabytes. Although they don't tell you that, it's in megabytes, okay? So we're going to go ahead and inherit core image, and we're going to say that that image size is going to be 8192. So that's a pretty straightforward image recipe for this YPDD image here, okay? This is the preferred way to create a custom final image for what you're going to do. In order to figure out what things, what package groups you're going to use, for that image install, you want to go ahead and look through those. Typically, you're going to say, well, that core image SATO or that core image X11 or core image 
um, Weston, for example, might be the right thing that I need. Maybe I need one that has MTD utils in it. Go look at what package groups are in the MTD utils uh, recipe. Go ahead and add those to your image install so that you get all the features that you want within that image install and then add your additional features that you want on top of that that are custom for you, if you will. So consider this kind of like the base, this first one here, this first image install, is these are the base things that there is required for the OS. The things on the bottom here, they can also be called image install. They said they might be called image feature. Um, feature as well is a, another word that they use. And that's what I call the optional things that are that are built on top of the UI, built on top of things like that as well. Okay. Now, there's a whole bunch of variable names, but they all end up doing the same thing, right? You're going to then go ahead and enable your meta ypdd layer we've already seen that in when we were in the layers chapter we're going to edit that bblayers.comp if we use the tool then we don't have to worry about it right if we use the bb bitmake layers tool and add the layer no problem it's already done that for you all right it already changes that uh, adds it to the bblayer.conf direct dot uh, com file in top, below top der in top der conf Okay, so let's take a look at the example here, right? We saw this right here. If we use the BitBake Layers tool, it'll take care of it for us, right? We already saw that BitBake Layers add layer. All right, now we're going to go ahead and build and boot it, right? So we're going to BitBake minus K. There's our image BB file. It'll find it because it's in BitBake Layers .com, BB Layers .com. It's also going to know how to find it because we have a layer.conf in meta ypdd that sits there and says go look for this image file in the images subdirectory because it has a file path to do that so when the parse step happens when this when the when the parse um parsing happens by bitbake at the beginning it finds that ypdd-image.bb file and can then go ahead and start running that file right if it's set up here, you'll notice it should take less than five minutes. And the reason it, it does is because, remember, in this case, you've already built a core image minimal, right? Which is poor package group core boot. That's the actual thing that's in core image minimals recipe. It says image install package group core boot. That's what's in there. So you've already built it. You're only going to add PSplash and our drop bear. Those are the only two things we're going to build. And so therefore, it should take about five minutes, right? Uh, yeah, should take about five minutes because only really all you're building is two things. You're building the piece splash and you're building the drop bear. That's it. Once you're done, you can go ahead and do your run QEMU. You'll notice that you can tell it where the directory is if you want to do that. <laughs> However, it should look for the last version. If you're building, for, if we haven't changed anything else, we're building for QEMU arm. The last um, the last image that was built, which will be this version that includes our PSplash drop bear, is the last thing that will be built. Our run QEM, you will know that. Find it based on the architecture and go ahead and try and build that. The only thing you might want to do is add that no graphic option. It makes it a little bit easier to kill from somewhere else. Just makes it easier to deal with. So it looks more like an SSH session at that point. All right. You can then go ahead and log into um, the device here and then go you log into QEMU and you can say which drop bear, which will find the correct version. You'll also see that QEMU, you will see the splash screen on the boot. It makes it easier, right? If you use the graphical version of it, it kind of looks like VNC, if you will, as far as that goes, as far as that goes. So the no graphic won't show the um, won't show the splash screen on the boot. It'll show the, the rest of it. Okay, so any questions on any of that before we move on? That's probably the easiest way to do it. There's some additional things we could talk about. For example, um, there's other ways where you can tell you want to use a core image. Um, you can require a recipe from Meta, for example, and then you can add your additional things if you want to. So that's one way. That's another way to do it. That's okay for testing. The most common thing we see is that people will add the additional things we want to add. Um, you want to use that plus equals variable here, like we saw here. 
right here, image install. Um, we we want to add things. You can put this also in your. Um, you can also put this in your local.com, in which case it will add it to any image recipes. So it'll add this plus, but be sure you use the plus equal here. If you don't use plus equal here, it'll replace it and only build whatever's in these two things. So be aware of that. Now, for testing and for development, you might want to put them in that local.com because it's easier to add and subtract them. Oh, yeah, that's what I want. Oh, no, that's not what I want. When you're done, however, you're going to want to make that make that uh, recipe, in which case it'll look more like uh, it'll look more like this. It'll look like that. Again, inherit whatever you need here using core image. Package group, core boot, those are the things I need. These are the optional things. Good to go. Any questions about this before we move on? Okay. So let's talk about toaster. Now, everything we've talked about to this point is all command line stuff, right? You're going to be on a terminal session. You could literally, you could have the machine thousand miles away and it would be perfectly fine, right? Might be a little slow depending on what's going on. But the reality is you could build this easily offsite somewhere. You could build it in the cloud. You could build it with AWS if you wanted to. You could build it on DigitalOcean. So it's it's doable, right? As far as that goes. Well, what if you want something that is a little bit more graphical? Let's say, for example, you're not really comfortable with getting down to the nitty gritty on a, on a command line. And instead, you'd rather have something nice little gooey thing, right? We've been working in, you know, we've been uh, working with uh, some gooey uh, editor, for example, and we're perfectly happy with that. And there's no reason that we want to get down to that command line. Well, we can use something called Toaster. Toaster allows us to have a visible way that's kind of graphically pretty to, to be able to actually run BitBake in the background. So think of this as a GUI front end for using BitBake. It does schedule builds. It does allow you to do things like decide that you want to build QEMU ARM or x86 here or QEMU x86. Uh, we can build different images here. You'll notice we can build a core image minimal or we can build a full SATO. We can build one for different architectures here. We can get information. We can click on this three errors here and find out what those errors are and be able to figure it out. You, just as like you can do down here at the bottom, you click on those. Well, what are the errors? What happened? And why did that build fail for some reason? You can get all kinds of information about what's being done. Now, this is great because, especially for departmental, let's say you want to do a departmental builder, you can do it that way. Or for your applications developers who are not comfortable getting down, for, perhaps, down to the nitty gritty of how BitBake works. They just want to develop their apps. There's a there's a whole section on something called Dev Tool, which will allow them to work with that as well. We haven't, I don't know if I'm going to talk about that or not. I might. I don't remember if that's in this. But that's another tool. Again, that's not a GUI tool. That's a that's a, a command line tool, but it works perfectly wonderfully. It's great, great stuff. So this is really nice. Similar to how everything else is done in in uh, in this project, it's Python. So it's Python Django, and specifically uh, as far as that goes, takes a few minutes to set it up. Um, but once you set it up, it's it you know it can be come up, it can be run on your local machine, it can be run on a departmental server, it can be run across the web with a backend server that's built somewhere else. Now the bulk of the data and the all those shared state caches and all the downloads are not necessarily on the machine running toaster. Don't have to be. So this is just a front end and it does have the concept of going across the internet. Security, yeah, that's a different issue because it doesn't really understand the security thing. So if it's on a VPN tunnel, it probably would work better as far as that goes. If you're building it digital ocean, it could be built, you know, between one container and another container where one container runs the where run container is going to actually run toaster and a different one might be doing builds, for example. That can happen as well. That'll work fine as far as that goes. All right. Here's toaster in a slide. 
you download um, or clone uh, Pocky like you do normally here. It comes with, it's one of those tools that comes with it. You download and install the dependencies, which are not a whole lot. Basically, Python virtual env for, um, for Python 3. You're going to go ahead and run this BNV. You're going to go ahead and activate it. You're going to do this pip install using the Pocky Bitbake toaster requirements.txt file as its input. And it's going to take a while to install all the appropriate Django pieces and all the other stuff. Eventually, you're going to be able to start toaster by, again, running your running your sourcing your OENIT build environment script. You're going to create a, your own new project called toaster project directory. We're going to go ahead and then source our toaster start. Our toaster starts going to make it so that um, it does all the sets up everything. It takes a couple minutes, actually two or three minutes to, for it to boot up. And then profit. Well, there's a few more things you got to do, right? So you want to log into it, right? So typically it uses localhost 8000. You can configure it differently if you want to so that it available to other people either locally on a project or either locally uh like for a uh a departmental builder or something like that perfectly well or something that works over the internet i'd suggest that you'd be a little careful of that and then it comes up and looks like this you can see recent recent builds and stuff like that now these recent builds are only going to be those things that are related specifically to um that have already been built, I should say. So you won't see anything here. Now within this, you can go ahead and create your own project. You can tell it what release you want to use, so it'll get the right one. You can tell it what architecture you want to use, what machine. You can tell it what what you want to actually build. I want to build a core image minimal, and you'll notice that it tells you what layer that comes from. It's that that recipe comes from in here, and then you click the build, and off you go. So. If this is all such wonderfulness, why doesn't everybody use it? Well, it has a couple of things that it doesn't do. The first thing is, is that the front end GUI and the back end aren't connected well enough to where that you can do things like stop a build. So if a build starts, you can't just kill it. That's probably the number one problem with it. Um, it doesn't really understand the concept of scheduling in the middle of the night kind of thing. I don't believe it has that capability yet. And so consequently, you might not, you know, it, it, it's not fully, fully an auto builder. There's an actual Yocto auto builder project, which is a different tool that's designed for that kind of functionality. Again, uses Python tooling because everything in, because everything in, in this project is Python, as far as that goes. So in the main page, you can do a walkthrough, right? You can demonstrate a new project select a machine, add custom layers, build an image, and get an image manifest from it here. So uh, I don't have a machine running right now. Uh, I, I don't use it because I'm a command line person. I'm a little old school, I guess, as far as that goes. But if you want to play with it, it's not that difficult to set it up and have some fun with it. it like I said, it comes with, it, it already comes with um, the existing version of uh, existing release so it's not something you have to um it does take some time to set up but you saw the requirements for it are fairly straightforward you go ahead and create this virtual environment thing here you do the pip install here pip 3 usually has to be installed and it usually is already um and then go ahead and um use this toaster requirements text file and it'll set up the rest of it for you okay and it works nicely I've showed this to a number of people and they really like it and they use it a lot for that. All right. Any questions on toaster? Let me try something here. Um, that's a good question. Can I do that? Okay, I can't see it apparently, so I'll go back to this. All right, any questions, Bian? 
Uh, let's see here. Oh, it's a couple I missed actually. Um, Michael has been answering some of them. Uh, Thank you, Michael. Did you say it's possible to connect to a remote server to track the build status? You can, but the but the coupling isn't all that good. <clears throat> it's not going to actually show us, for example, the various tasks that we're seeing going along as tasks go, go across. I don't believe it shows that that level of, of integration. It shows kind of a little bar going across, but I think that's just that's the front end and back end talking to each other. It doesn't really give you that level of detail. You can look at the log files and stuff like that as well, though, later on. Anything else? Uh, just reading back through here. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, OK, it says thank you. Uh, yeah, there's some questions about um, drop bear um, uh, being added to the, the, the image. A okay, drop bear is one of the options that you can use for um, drop bear is one of the options you can use for it as an SSH server. Um, it's a small one. It's a tiny one used by a lot of small images. Open SSH uh, server is another implementation of SSH server as well of uh, this used and usually and those two actually are mutually exclusive. That is to say their recipes have conflicts on each other, right? So you don't have one or the other. Got to make sure of that. They can both be in the repository, but but in an image file, you can only have one of the two because they fight for the same port 22. So you can't have them both in the same image. You can't have both in the same, you can have them both in the same repository, however. That is to say, remember that it builds it, puts it in, puts it in the repository, either a IPK uh, deb or a RPM. And so that can be in there, but you can't have it in the same image because that'll, that'll cause a conflict as far as that goes. You'll notice that it's used as a, you'll notice it's not part of the base image that isn't part of the, um, the package group that it's building, but rather it's an add-on. And the reason why we do that, and by the way, you could put that on the same line is, if you want to. There's nothing that says you can't. By convention, you kind of try and separate one as a feature that is something that you add on and the other one is the base stuff. Indeed, there's, uh, when I'm teaching, it's probably easier to show that because they have image features versus image um, um, things that you're going to actually put in the image, image install. So they have features, so as far as that goes. And then you know which is which. Go ahead. Uh, another question is, does Toaster work with ice cream distributed compilers, so ICC, presumably? Yeah, uh, that's a back-end thing that gets set up differently, and I've not set up that. Um, that's If you want to ask about that, you should talk to Joshua Watt. Yeah, he'd probably know. Well, he set it up. He's done that. Ah, uh, oh, he has done that. Okay. He has hey, done again, that. That's, that's the reason that why I'm saying talk to Joshua Watt. <laughs> there we go. There we he go. would know about it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and uh, just following up, one of the uh, the comments that uh, Michael said is is Yocto means small. Uh, strictly speaking, Yocto is ten. It's it's the smallest SI uh, unit. It's ten to the minus twenty four. Although uh, to uh, everybody else's. Um, uh, or some of the other comments, uh, you know, <laughs> Yocto's getting bigger and bigger. Certainly, um, uh, you can build small things with it, but indeed, a, uh, a nominal image, of course, still ends up being relatively large, depending on how you look at it. But yeah, Yoc <laughs> Yocto indeed is meant to be small. Uh, it's the, like I said, the smallest possible unit defined in SI. So, right. The, uh, I think I that's mean, all the I, questions. Right. And I, and I have, for example, I'm actually using it to build um, container images as well, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Yes, and that, that's happening more and more, I understand. More and more, so. more and more, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good questions, thank you. All right, let's talk about building, adding an image to our application, right? We have our custom application, right? We have our custom image. We've already added our features. We've got our P-Splash and our drop bear, and we've got, um, We've now got our um, uh, base image, which is the core image minimal equivalent there by building the package group core boot. We can then go ahead and but let's say we want to add an application to that. How are we going to do that? So to do that, let's see, start the presentation. There we go. So let's take a look at that. The general procedure is we write the hello world app or whatever it is. We go ahead and create a recipe for that. 
right? A BB file, if you will. We modify the image recipe to add the hello world application. We add that to the image that plus equals, and then we add ours to that list that might include P splash and 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 uh and drop bear, and we'd add our hello to that as well. Hello, and they'll know to look for the hello BB file and and build it. So this is a simple C file application. Remember that you might have to pass some compiler flags and tell it where the directory is for building all of that. You know, in the recipe, uh, as you saw earlier, you did recipe file that looks like that. Is that correct, Ian? That looked like a simple C file. Uh, yes, I think so. Okay, so it's going to look like that, right? Because it does not have a uh, it, because it doesn't have a make file. Pretty simple, right? You can do right. tarball sources. Again, if you have an upstream or it comes from somewhere else, you can use the source URI, just like we saw in the earlier recipes here. So for our simple one here, we're going to go ahead and create our hello. We're going to have our files here. We're going to put our hello.c in there, right? We're going to go ahead and play with a scratch. We're going to copy that in when we're done. It's going to look something like this. Remember, this is an application, so we're going to use standard IO. It's a typical uh, user space application. We're going to go ahead and create a recipe core here. That's the hello recipe, right? We actually already did this already, so we don't need to worry about it. Here's our hello um, 1.0 BB slide here. So let's take a look at what it looks like. It's pretty straightforward, right? We've seen this before. We're going to pass in some flags. We're going to do this install here. We know why do we use the install step, right? Because we can't just copy things over because it doesn't necessarily mean with PSEUDO, sudo. This that helps sudo to know how we're setting this up and who the owner and the UGO, the user group and other permissions are, those ACLs, if you will. All of that stuff has to be set. So we just install instead of using a simple copy to put it in the right place. We want to make sure that we set it up with the correct information. And then basically modify it to add the hello world, right? Go back here, right? And in this step right here, this step right here, right? In this step right here, this image install, we're going to add our hello right here. So put a space. After the drop bear, put in hello and then close the quote there, and it's now added to our recipe, right? We have our package group. We have uh, adding drop bear plus our hello app, and then when we build it, it will go ahead and build our recipe in addition to that, okay? Just going to build this BB file here, right? You see, oh, actually, it shows it right here. Okay, so as far as that goes, so again, there's our package core group. You'll notice that there's an image install. You could have called this feature as well. I've seen this use the word feature used here as well. And then inherit core image, and off you go. You go ahead and bit bake it. There's our image here. It's going to add our hello to that image. And then you can find it hello, and you'll see our hello world in QEMU. Pretty straightforward as far as that goes. And indeed, that's a very good, that's what the, the typical method is for that. Now, your, um, you can add additional image features to your own layer. So for example, the, um, let's say you've got a, um, let's say you have a, uh, a, a, your own layer and your own image, uh, your own image, how do I say this? You have your own image append. So you're gonna create an image append, which is gonna add your, you know, and all it may say is, image install plus equals and your hello app. That's a very common way. So whatever that new application is, your applications developer is doing, they're going to go ahead and create an image and an image um, BB file, image BB append for that image, whatever you're going to be building for, and then just add the hello so that their application now gets built alongside of it. It's built together. They're not going to touch this, this um, this particular uh, image, they're, they're not going to touch the image BB file because that's not their file to touch. That's in some other layer, right? That's owned by somebody else. They can, however, add their own application to it easily by creating an image installed BB file, an image BB file, BB append rather, sorry, that includes image install plus equals and hello. 
or whatever the name of their app is. And that's a very common way to do this for applications developers. This would be done by a systems developer typically to add it to this. Does that make sense to everybody? And is there a question with regard to this? Okay, so we build and test. So anything? No question. Okay, so it, indeed, um, this is kind of the end of it. I know we're a little early, but generally speaking, what we end up with is a series of questions, which is good. So we have a good amount of Q&A time all left over so that we can add this. I'll go ahead. Uh, we can You can find out about additional training from the Linux Foundation itself. They have uh, professionally led courses, both online, in person, and some that are um, self-paced. So there's a whole bunch of them here. Um, embedded Linux de development here you can find at um, this uh, this here. Um, as you know, this bit.ly that's down here in the lower right hand corner is this presentation here. So please feel free to go ahead and download that if you haven't already. As far as that goes, uh, like I said, I'm a, I'm a foundation trainer and I really enjoy it. Remember that Yocto project is not an embedded Linux distribution rather that it creates one for you. And this is a bunch of tooling and recipes and all kinds of wonderful things that make your life a lot easier. And I know we did, I don't know if we spent any time on this, but one of the great features is um, license management. And that means that if you're the release engineer, you can, you can use one of the BB classes here. It's called the archiver class. And that archiver class will allow you to create a tarball with all the source code that you're required to have so that you can meet the requirements and make your life a whole lot easier. Now that could be anything from plain source that you downloaded to source that's been patched to source that's been configured. Depends on how, you know what your what your legal department will let you get away with or what you will let you do as far as that goes. So there's a whole bunch of other classes, BB classes, which will help you as well. So hopefully that's helped you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, deal with that here. Let's see. Oh, here's some gotchas, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the network proxy is an important thing. Um, curious, uh, if you want to raise your hand so that BM can count, how many people are behind a network proxy or behind a firewall that makes things very difficult? That's not unusual, right? A few hands. Few hands. Well, that's not bad. It's getting better. <laughs> it used to be pretty bad. Okay, so let's take a look at and do not try and reuse the same shell environment when moving between copies of the build system. Absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely I have a couple not. questions here. Uh, a couple questions. Um, Go ahead. How does one set the install path for apps in the root file system? Oh no, sorry. He he found out uh, it, it's Binder. So yeah, that that's exactly the right answer. That's right. Um, it's Binder. Uh, is it easy to switch between static and dynamically linking for tools in Yocto or static libraries always built in the def default uh, Pocky distribution? Uh, they're not static. Generally, they're almost always dynamic. Mm -hmm. Unless you tell it otherwise. You'd have to tell each individual thing that you're building, whether it's static or not. It's not a generally, I don't think there's actually a flag that I've ever seen used that says everything is built static. I've never seen that done. Yeah, generally speaking, uh, dynamic is smaller, and uh, that's yep. usually one of the reasons for, for doing it. Um, oh, and uh, Michael also, uh, Michael Optinacker also points out that, of course, uh, you can build an SBOM um, yes. uh, in SBDX format to describe your components, their licenses, their sources, the security fixes you applied, and so on and so forth. Absolutely. Uh, that's a that's a huge uh, benefit huge. of, of uh, Yakto Project. Uh, especially with uh, recent um, uh, things that have happened, certainly in, in mm -hmm. various countries, but uh, for for if for no other reason, just because of the 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 the, um, uh, the, the, the bills that are not the bills, the uh, things that have come out of the White House, the requirements, pardon me, that come out of the White House for mm -hmm. uh, for um, government uh, work uh, merely in the U.S. Although that's not the world over, that that has a huge impact on the rest of the industry uh, yes, it does. across the world. So. Um, is there a built-in way to make uh, OENIT build env to add something to my prompt so I can see that I'm in the build environment? Uh, Basically, can you can you yeah, change the prompt? I guess. I, I guess I guess my answer to you is is this, that it's that 
don't forget that pretty much everything is executable except for comp files. So be, so you can't really put it in a comp file and expect that to happen. No, I've never seen the ability to do it. Generally speaking, the only things that go across builds are comp files. So the question is, how do you do that? I think you can inherit, I suppose you could do something really ugly. You could create your own class that does that and then inherit that class. Just as a theory, um, uh, OENIT buildenv does uh, export information to the local environment, so I, 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 I suspect it's theoretically possible. Oh yeah, you could uh, you could change modify PS1. the script. Yeah, you could, yeah, you, could no, the, you could you could change that the script to do it. Yeah, people do absolutely. make changes, or they do wrap. Uh, people do wrap or or make changes to uh, uh, OENIT buildenv. So so I would agree that, go. that I think nominally I think nominally it's it's not something that's done, but. Uh, I suspect it's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just a guess. Yep. I'm going to guess that that's right. That's absolutely right. Okay. Uh, Philip, and, um, Philip also points out that there's going to be yeah. a, an SBOM related talk uh, sometime this week. Um, oh, good. Do you mean at, at uh, uh, Yachter Project Summit, Philip? Or do you mean, uh, uh, Phil, or do you mean um, at, uh, um, at the summit? I summit. Oh, good. Cool. There'll be two, apparently, Michael says. Oh, even better. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, yeah that's a great, that's super a great important. thing. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, but now, the shared state cache between hosts running the same Linux distributions, even though they say it works, I believe that actually works now. It's There's, there's a couple of things that we do. Uh, um, there's a couple of things that we do to help the shared state cache server, and that is when I'm building for multiple architectures, um, and we're starting over with our shared state cache. Um, typically, what we'll end up doing is we'll end up starting one build, let it get through all the natives and 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 the, and at least an initial tool chain, if you will, and then start the other ones. And the reason is because otherwise everybody's trying to build the same at the same time, build the same um, uh, natives, and there's no reason to beat up on the poor shared state cache server that badly. So just let one of them build it. And then start the rest of them, if you want to do that. And I've seen that work nowadays, where you you can use the shared state cache between them. Later versions, and I don't remember when that got fixed. I saw it in Dunfell, so I'm assuming it was at least Dunfell. I don't know whether it would happen earlier or not. Let's see. Uh, there are project resources here. Uh, there are Bugzilla. Be sure to use look at the Bugzilla if you've got any questions. They they do keep it up. Um, there are, the Yocto project is always looking for help, especially with bugs. There are newbie bugs, that is to say bugs that are designed for people who are not super familiar with the Yocto project. Um, and there is certainly help from people if, if there's any questions on that, that's available through Bugzilla. Um, the email list often tells us what bugs are available and there's a discussion about that. Um, there's also discussions on CVEs. So if CVEs are one of the things that you're concerned about, and how do we mitigate them? Uh, there's a there's a list that talks about them. There's a report that comes out every week um, that's being done on, there's a CVE list, what's open, uh, so you can look at that. Uh, every uh, Steve Sackerman sends that out every Sunday morning. So as far as that goes, um, both get uh, openembedded.org and yachtoproject.org, both of them, uh, have some nice browsing features for you to look through things, and you know, I don't remember whether whether they're using CGit or what they're using right now. I think it was CGit last time I looked at it from a web web page perspective. It's really quite nice um, and easy to find things as far as that goes. Uh, let's see, there are some lists, different lists at Open Embedded as well as at. Um, at Yocto project, there's announce lists and there's developer lists, and they still use heavily used listservs. So that still exists today. They do have both of them have an IRC channel. I don't know whether they've got other places or not, but those are the places that I would typically look. And like I said, the documentation is incredible for a project of its size. The, the documentation is outstanding as far as that goes. That's are there any example recipes that set up UDEV rules or are there simple, uh, or, or are these simple copy recipes? 
I don't know of anybody any that specifically set up UDEV rules that I've seen. I'm sure that I'm sure that the UDEV rules are going to be set up typically by the underlying application or the underlying service, shall we say. I know there's a BB class for, for dealing with uh, yes. um, for dealing with uh, that well for dealing with uh, well the system D class. and I imagine I imagine UDEV is probably somewhere in there. I, I don't know exactly. Uh, Phil, actually, you might have uh, know better. Yeah, I don't have a specific example of that. Certainly, I don't either. Uh, what was that again? Uh, is there uh, are there any good example recipes that set up UDEV rules? I can't think of one off the top of my head. Yeah, nor can I. <laughs> I figured I'd ask since you were here. And uh, yeah, Michael, I, 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 we'd have do to you know look. Michael? Yeah, so would I. <laughs> That seems like none of us off the top of our heads have good, yeah, good, a good I don't have one answer to that. <laughs> right. So there's another option that you might want to look at here, which is kind of nice, which is at grep. It's another form. Remember I said looking at grep, um, grepping out, especially if you use the, the Bitmake layers tool to try and find things uh, and uh, try and find uh, that. Uh, so you go ahead and use at grep instead, makes it easier, skips things like get fi not get file, got SBN files, can be taught arbitrary types, it's kind of nice. Makes it a little bit easier. You can see here, so here's our alias here if you want to use that. And then you can start doing the search with that, okay? Uh, there is Vim highlighting that's been done if you want to do Vim, if you use Vim. So that helps for, for doing Bitbank stuff. Makes your life a lot easier. Um, you can see that it actually does that. Most of the time, that's kind of built in. It seems to know about it. Uh, I notice that most of the time I see that. And maybe I've, maybe I've already, by default, said it turned it on a while ago, and I forgot about it. It's probably been four or five years that I've seen it. So thank you for joining us. I'm, I'm here, certainly, for the remainder of the time until you know the happy hour happens. And we can certainly ask any questions. I'm going to go ahead and and stop sharing here at this point.